SoundCloud, and then I'll share my screen. Thank you all for uh, being very patient with us while we chatted with uh, Dr. Andy. You can see Dr. Parappa Singh. I'm calling him Andy. But this is the Seven Seas Cruising Association with our cruising host, Jesse James. You see Jesse on the side. Hi, Nation, Trinidad and Tobago. And I'm Joan Conover, but you can find more information at www.ssca.org. And what is SSCA? Well, for me, it's a uh, personal view. It's not just passages or rallies. It's staying in contact 24 seven. We're cruisers. We have a very nice web portal with a member directory. You can find people, an AIS map. You can find where their people are if they have AIS, publications, social media. We do a lot of um, uh, cruising advocacy, lobbying, like the anchoring efforts. What we're trying to do in Trinidad is lobbying. Uh, members have complimentary subscriptions. We do a clean wake program, which is rather interesting for those. And then we have a document library. All of the presentations for our GAMS, the PowerPoint slides are there for you to use. And as part of a member, there's a lot of it. So you can see some of the things that we have. There's actually, you can get uh, free magazine subscriptions. You get Ocean Navigator and Blue Water Sailing just for signing up. You get a free Virgie this year for a new member signing up, free Virgie Thanks. for a short time. And we have get togethers or GAMs. The one key thing we've been doing heavily the past years is an on-call cruiser network, SSCA uh, KPK radio with Glenn Tuttle and in partnership with boatwatch.org, Caribbean Security and Safety Net, Marine Weather Center, Chris Parker, various governments, cruising station hosts, members, and online resources like, like Sally with uh, Caribbean Compass and like Noon Sites. We're all working together. OCC has been a partner, OCC members, SSCA members. When a boat's in trouble, we reach out and it's a network. Jesse James, our cruising host. Jesse's gonna step through at the beginning, give you an overview for Trinidad. Then he's going to go over what a group called Yacht Services Association, Trinidad and Tobago, nickname is Yacht uh, YSAT, have helped to do to continue to ensure cruiser safety in many ways, but most recently how to get this COVID rules and regulations so Trinidad can open up and allow cruisers into a safe haven during hurricane season. He's been our host for over 20 years. He's a key part of SSCA and Jesse, I'm going to turn this over to you and let you um, take over from here. There you go, Jesse. Okay, thank you, Joan. Um, uh, it was just great to, to I actually enjoy the initial um, chit chat with uh, John and the Cibrel and Louise and those guys. It just kind of helped relax me a bit. So thank you all. So hello, everyone. Thank you for joining on this, this webinar session. Thank you, Joan. Canova, the SSCA Cruising Station host coordinator for making this brilliant idea materialize today. Uh, when June first called, called me about it, I was very excited. So thank you, Joan. My, so like you said, my name is Jesse James. I'm the SSCA Cruising Station host here in Trinidad. I've been a Cruising Station host here for the past 20 years or so. And I own and operate a taxi, taxi and tour service called Members Only Maxi Taxi and Tour Services. And um, you don't have to be a member. Once you enter Trinidad Waters, you automatically become a member. So at present, at the present moment, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, our borders are still closed. And as things all over the world are, it's not normal these days. I'm sure everyone is, is anxious to know what's happening here at this point. So join me, my wife and I, as we venture to share with you all, all some information using some visual aids of what's happening here in Trinidad and Tobago as really to our yacht community. Go ahead. Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to Trinidad. My name is Jesse James. I'm the Seven Seas Cruising Association uh, host here for Trinidad. 
Welcome to Trinidad. So I uh, have an office here in Paw Woods. It's um, in the middle of the marina. And my office is together with YSAT, the Yacht Services Association, and we share the same office. So we're in the middle of the cluster of all the yachts. So if anybody needs any assistance, I'm just right plumb in the middle of it. You just walk over, then you out from the anchorage, and you can come by and see us. So as you can see, um, Trinidad, we are the most, we are the, the southernmost island in the Caribbean chain of islands. We are approximately 10 degrees north latitude, which places us just below the hurricane belt and outside that area of high risk as required by most insurance companies for cruises during the hurricane uh, season. And as you can see, the, the uh, chart there with uh, hurricanes over the years. Okay. So, as I said um, earlier, borders remain closed. Um, presently, there's a, a community, community spread outbreak in Trinidad here. So the government is currently trying to bring home a lot of nationals that have been stuck outside Trinidad since March month. And the parallel healthcare system here and state quarantine can only accommodate a certain amount of persons at any one point in time. And presently, due to the, the current community outbreak and spread, the government has been very careful not to overload the healthcare system. So presently, in Chagaramas, all the businesses uh, they are adhering to all the new normal standards and protocols that the government and the Ministry of Health has laid out. Some of them including you know, social distancing, wearing a face mask, which has become mandatory here now, washing of hands, so all these things have been set up for uh, reopening. So that's all been adhered to in Chagaramas. I am a board member of WISA, the Services Association, Association of Trinidad and Tobago. So what have we done? YSATS, we submitted a letter to the Prime Minister's Road to Recovery Committee in April, and that letter was uh, acknowledged. Uh, we also submitted a YSAT PHSS proposal to government for a safe reopening of the sector. This document was acknowledged by the Chief Medical Officer and was said to be well put together and of a high standard. We also held meetings with various government agencies that are involved in the yachting sector, including the Trinidad and Tobago Coast Guard, Maritime Services, Immigrations and Customs, the North Coast Radio Station guys, and the Ministry of Health. Um, we also met in June with the Minister of National Security and the Minister of Finance. The Minister of National Security is ultimately responsible for border control, and the Minister of Finance they both were very concerned about the plight of the yachting industry. And after hearing our plight, in spite of uh, trying to get nationals home and so on, they were very concerned and they asked us to, to uh, send them a, a follow-up letter, which we did. So as we, we move on and we continue to deal with COVID-19, um, you can keep checking my website, www.membersonlymats.com for regular updates as to the status of Trinidad and Tobago. And we'll be putting up all these updates on SSCA and various cruisers uh, social media platform. So within the proposal, upon approval or whenever any facilitation or exemption uh, is given by government, these may be some of the steps that cruisers will have to follow. Um, you'll have to submit your float plan, which is already in existence. Submit a maritime health declaration form prior to arriving in the Trinidad. All cruisers upon arrival over here, you will be uh, having to go into quarantine for about 14 days in into a designated area by the Coast Guard. Um, everyone, while in quarantine, you'll have to monitor your, your health status. Um, upon arrival, a government a delegate or representative from the Chief Medical Officer will uh, visit you upon arrival and at the end of your 14 day quarantine period. All health protocols, whatever they may be at that point in time, must be adhered to. And then finally, customs and immigration uh, protocols will be, uh, must be followed accordingly. So at this point in time, I have a guest speaker, my very good friend, Dr. Partup Singh. Dr. Partup Singh is the CEO of the Public Health Goodwill, which is a nonprofit organization. He is a public health strategist. 
Dr. Dr. Parat Singh has extended his knowledge and experience to YSATs and assisted us in creating our YSAT PHSS uh, document. So Dr. Parat Singh, thank you very much for joining us and we appreciate your time and what you've done so far for us. So please, Dr. the floor is yours now. He needs to unmute. My bad. There you go. All right, here you know. <laughs> good, good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be part of this, ac this exercise, this, this meeting, this activity, and to, to, to get a vibe for your community. I really appreciate it. Um, so as Mr. James said, that we, we work together with YSAT to sort of to look at what it is that the government was requesting of cruisers coming into. And then we married that with the international health regulations. So if you, these are a bunch of regulations that govern movement of vessels across international borders. So the Trinidad Tobago signed on to these international health regulations. And, and because of that, a lot of the measures, uh, especially the legal measures are guided by these uh, IHR regulations. So we merged those together and included the local legal frameworks that govern, meaning the national legal frameworks that govern a vessel coming into our waters from an international port. And that's what's available in the YSAT PHSS. Um, really, I think it stands for Port Health Safety System, you know, in terms of making sure that from a Port Health perspective, it is safe. And, and so that's the message that YSAT was able to do. Now, just to highlight that another thing that the plan considered was, um, and Mr. James mentioned this in his previous slide, that there's the Road to Recovery Committee. So that's one level of review uh, or approvals and then, or engagement. And then there is the, of the Ministry of Health um, and uh, that is another level. And then the Ministry of National Security, which is another level. So technically what Mr. James and YSAT has done is submitted a comprehensive package of measures that cruisers will have to engage in that is grounded in the science that is not meant to be burdensome beyond what is necessary on the cruisers but um but what what is in compliance with the national regulations and international standards and i think at some point in time um one when that becomes available or, or approval to allow for entry when that comes in, Mr. James will share those with you so that you'll be able to, it'll be fully transparent. You'll see what those guidelines are. Um, so, you know, it, it really is to say that these are the measures. Now, the other thing that I wanted to, that's worthy to talk about on this slide is point number two and the Maritime Declaration of Health. If you would have come into Trinidad before, you would have not had to fill out a Maritime Declaration of Health. Um, and correct me, uh, Mr. James, right? If I'm... Yes, that's correct. Good. You just had to follow the float plan for security reasons, and that was it. Right. So the Maritime Declaration of Health and the, the document that Mr. James and they will, set, will send, the YSAT PHSS, has that template document on it yes. for yep. you to fill out. Mm -hmm. But yep. it's a standard uh, document, again, coming out of WHO that's used across the globe for yes. seagoing vessels entering a country crossing international borders so that's that's the only change um again the document that is perhaps the core document that the port the health authorities will be using yes. to get to, to review clearance um the if you look at point number uh four point number four is also a really good one i think the more you can show that you have been monitoring yourself that you have been symptom free, that your risk of exposure has been contained as best possible, given that it is everywhere, the virus is everywhere. The, be the more you can show that, the, the greater the confidence you will be, that the health authorities will have in giving you as a vessel that clearance. Because as much as there will be, uh, I can imagine there being uh, a, you know, facilitation, it will still be an you know, a vessel by vessel review, right. a situation by situation review. So that kind of documentation, that sort of, and that's why I was asking the questions in the chat earlier on, 
what is the, your monitoring like? What has been your experience? What are your thoughts with regard to monitoring? Because, you know, it could be a little bit invasive. It could be a little bit intrusive, I should say. Having to check your temperatures, having to maintain a log of signs and symptoms, even if you're asymptomatic, you know? Um, so that's something to think about. Uh, how you can show that you have been symptom free for a period of time. Notwithstanding that, there will still be the need for the, the testing. Sure. And when that again comes, we would be guided by WISAC, will be guided by what the regulations or the rules that are set out from the health authorities locally. Um, so that really is, you know, and, and just to highlight that I was part of those conversations when Mr. James met with the immigration authorities, the maritime divisions, the customs divisions. So there is, and even the health division, so there, there is consensus in, in, in the approaches moving forward. So we really don't expect there to be a challenge in moving forward upon the, 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 the allowance to enter international waters. May I ask a question, Andy? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, you're using um, tests that take, what, three-day re return? PRCs, well, it, or what are you using? It, I, it, it's the PCR test, right? Now, mm -hmm. I know that some, when it first began, I, there were reports, results within 24 hours, results within 48 hours. Whether there has been a delay or a longer time in getting that, it varies, I think, is also a question of demand and supply. Um, so, but I, I do believe it's the standard PCR that does have the capacity to give you a quick turnaround within 24 hours. There's nothing on this list that other countries aren't doing. Uh, we have almost the same thing to enter the U.S. from coming offshore. Um, a little bit not as strict with some of the forms, but the same ideas. Uh, they don't require a COVID test coming into the United States, but if you're sick, you do. Um, for Andy, for um, they're inside Trinidad. Um, how difficult is it to get a test? I mean, right now, how would you do it? So right now, getting a test, you have to go through the private, the public system. Sorry, um, you're referred to a health facility, a health center, and at that, and there's a health center in Carinage. Um, they are actually designated, which is close to the the port, uh, Chagaramas, but they are designated testing sites. The, the thing though that I would say would be for cruisers coming in, because YSAT and Mr. James is your focal point, the health authorities know that YSAT and Mr. James, these two are the focal points. So they will be liaising with Mr. James to coordinate this testing. So I cannot imagine, I mean, again, it will depend on when that, even if it is to be done within the public system or the private system, because at one point in time, there were two labs that were approved to do private testing, right? So even if that there's that facility for cruisers to access testing from the private system, it will still be happening through the port health authorities in terms of the approval or the, 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 yeah, the approval to proceed right. to that facility to get testing. Well, right. I think maybe the smart thing to do, because Jesse, you have the website that's almost a, a government website with all of the updates on it, is that you can find answers to some of those questions and post yes. it on your website. Yep. And mm -hmm. so that the cruisers can see that and maybe count down to how soon you think that Trinidad will be open. But right now they have to go to Grenada if they're gonna be going out of the hurricane uh, areas. And right. for that, they need to check with, um, uh, May May Tag. Tag. May Tag. Uh, yeah. And after this webinar, I will send out in the responses to everyone the different links to the different places for the different islands so that they can see, and I'll, go, I'll pull it from Noonsight and some others, so that they can see who's doing what where, at least on the, on the online, to find out what's going on as they try to head south. And they're right. having to head south pretty soon, so I'm going to have to do this in the next day or so. Um, and after, I won't say any more, but uh, you're going to have to keep your website's going to be really important, Jesse. Yes, for sure. So, yes, we'll update. Yeah. Sorry, Doctor. You know, if I may, if I may jump in there, just to really reiterate that even anyone coming in 
and coming in through Mr. James, th that, that really is your link because Mr. James has access to myself and then in terms of getting the advice to make it as seamless Correct. as possible. That's right, yeah. Yeah, even, you know, in terms of uh, the monitoring, the declaration forms, you know, it, you, you have that link through Mr. James and the support from myself to encourage that, that making it as seamless as possible. Hey, Jordan. That's it. With that, do you That's want it. to do your, your next slides to show everybody what's going on, Jesse? Okay, well, I have to say thank you very much uh, to Dr. Pradab Singh. And just to um, support what the uh, doctor was saying on point number four, what I said would we'll, we'll, we'll do um, if you know, folks are in monitoring their, their, their health, we have uh, created a welcome packet that once, once the system starts to work, we'll be giving out a welcome packet that includes a temperature, uh, a thermometer, hand sanitizer, and a face mask. Just, you know, it's a welcome pack to train that. So, Doc, thank you very much. We in the yachting industry can train that in Tobago and by extension, the international and community really do appreciate your assistance and your guidance and knowledge thus far and we look forward to working with you and um, in going forward so thank you very much so i know we'll probably have some uh, questions on today june june after um we run through so that's the first section so um that's some serious business over here over there but there were some questions and concerns and perceptions about you know what's going on in shagar i'm not saying trying that so those of you who consider training at home and would like to come here, I know some of you have been, we've been chatting before. Chagaramas Hub, you know, th this is just within a one mile radius or even less. This is a, this is a cluster of uh, boat yards and marinas and services that you can find right in Chagaramas here. All right, as you pull up into Chagaramas from your long passage, you'll pull right up, there's a the customs dock at cruising, you jump off your boats, Less than a minute, just, you'll walk right into customs and immigration for your clearing in. And then for security reasons, and we mentioned float plan, YSAT's North Post Registration and Trinidad and Tobago Coast Guard has been work, working together. And the picture on your, on your left shows an escort by the Coast Guard to one of the uh, convoys um, that happened last year. And North Post Registration on the right, you can see the bottom right hand side, that's a screen of the EIS. A monitoring system they have there. So I'll be encouraging everybody to get the AIS if possible. Cruise and Marina, world-class marina, all the facilities, they have a lovely hotel there and they have a pool that is, I mean, it's just an amazing facility um, at the Cruise and Marina. Then we have the, the marinas down in Chagaramas. And uh, just to let you all know, again, the concern is some people have been asking what's going on in Chagaramas. These pictures were taken by my you know, very own Bruce on my Matilla, and he hauled out his boat last week, Friday. So these pictures were all done within the last week or two. Power Boats Marina, down Power Boats, and this is for some of you who may not have been here before. And looking on, right in Power Boats, there's the uh, fuel dock, pull alongside, get a fuel. There's the dock side supermarket, run up with your dinghy, jump out, get some uh, food. And bottom left and right, there's the trimaran and catamaran trailer, something that's our very own Donald Stolmeyer, you know, mastermind. And here's one of the boat yards, Brent, one of the, the boat yard managers. I had a conversation with him. Some of you all would be happy to hear from him. So I'll let him say hi to you all. All right, Jess, good to see you all. Good see you all. Everything, um, everything's good. Um, a little difficult with this COVID. We are on Leonard. There are local boats still around that are keeping us alive, waiting on the foreign boats or the borders to open so that we could have the foreign boats come here. We are prepared for them. Then all yeah. our repairs on the lifts, stands, you name it, we really are prepared for when that, that border opens. <coughs> and welcome all, welcome. Okay, well, I guess it should be the well, we have, we could actually do almost anything in this yard. There's hardly any service that we don't supply. Um, other than that, uh, all the contractors are all working now. Yes, we, we kept them around, local boats kept them around and busy, so we are ready and... Uh, 
All right, so there you go. That's uh, Brenton Farwoods. I look like a photographer there, but I'm not. I'm just holding Bruce's camera for him. And right next to Peak, next to Farwoods, you've got the Peaks Marina. And Peaks, you have a massive trav lift over there, approximately 160 ton uh, trav lift. And again, it's in motion and operating. And there we have um, a huge catamaran being hauled out. Again, these pictures were taken just recently, and they have all the garbage truck collection within each yard, do their daily collections. We have the proper repair shop. We have a, a machine shop in right in Peaks Boat Yard over there. Everything, you know, in a cluster. And here's my very good friend, uh, Peter Peak. He owns and runs uh, the Peaks Marina. So Peter will just have a little word with us and say hi. Those are customers that, that, that will be maybe watching or interviewing there, but you, you might not be on. Okay. Um, so it takes a while to get here, and everybody talks about where you're going before you go. So I don't think many people arrive here not knowing what to expect, you know, and that's why it's been in the past. And we certainly have everything going on still. Everything that has always been going on, you know, we fix everything, else. we fix rudders, we fix shafts, we fix propellers, we paint bottom, we paint boats. You know, we're fortunate we have. All right, thank you, Peter. So it was a little bit noisy on the background there, but that noise shows and indicates that things are still rolling in the uh, in Chakramas. Next slide. Then we have Coral Cove Marina and Boatyard. Coral Cove have quite a few slips over there in their marina. Actually talking about uh, um, slips. Each marina also have a couple uh, slips that you can use, utilize. There's bottom left hand side, they travel for Coral Cove and at Coral Cove, they have some, it's a, they have some rooms over there too. And speaking about rooms also, each marina also have accommodation that you can, if you're doing some major repairs and you need to get a night away from the boats, uh, they, you can get uh, rooms at reasonable rates and they all self-contained. Then at Coral Cove, upper right hand side, you need a SIM card right there the, as you walk into Coral Cove on the upper left hand side. And there's Mel on the right, right hand side, Majestics, like a sort of mini channelry store. And then bottom left hand side corner, that is, this is a very, very important spot and location and activity that's happening down there. Entering that, that's what you call lining. After a hard day's work, everybody just sit on by the gizigo right behind those, everybody there. There's uh, Bruce and Wild Matilda, uh, Tom and Sabrina, Willie and Mark. Hi guys, if you're listening, listening in, Shadow Fox, uh, we all just lining, having a beer, having something to eat right here in Coral Cove. And for those of you who are waiting to come back home and the new ones who will be here short uh, sometime, this is a project that Whitehead has also been lobbying for many, many years and it has finally happened just after the reopening of uh, some of the, the uh, industries here. This pathway was finally open. So it's a cycling and walking pathway and it stretched the entire length of the Chagaramas Peninsula. So lovely enhancement to the area. And we go into this cluster. Talk about this cluster in a one mile area. Upper right hand side corner, some dude is doing some repairs to his mask over there. I don't know if anybody recognizes that guy who is concentrating, concentrating so hard on his, his mask. Yeah, that's the famous Chris Doyle. If you have, don't have one of it, you need to get one of his, uh, his uh, cruising guides, Chris Doyle. Bottom left hand side, we have the guys from Perfect Finishing, and there's Amos and his team working on a boom. Upper right hand side corner, we have Jonathan, all board services, a very popular service over there. Right below, uh, ma huge mass, those cranes can take off any size mass right here in Trinidad. Uh, fuel tank cleaning. And then to the middle of the lower slide, we have some work done by Craftline Woodworking. Susie, spirited lady, if you're listening, listening to me, darling, this is how lovely your deck looks. Everything handmade, every joint is, an, is a, it really, really looks wonderful. All local uh, teak and local labor right here in Chagaramas. The next slide, so we go into upper right hand side, we have uh, uh, Sean, superb sales and canvas. Him and his team, yes, his guys doing some dinghy covers. Very important service to keep those dinghies uh, from the sun. And doing repairs to sales, building sales, any canvas work, repairs, superb. And we have some steel fabricating, rigging, radar installation. There's EJ doing repairs uh, to his uh, fantastic um, service, prop, prop repairs. And lower, 
left hand side part of this slide we have a guy doing some fiberglass in here this is a shop on just above the guy doing fiberglass and there's a what do you call that um a mold donald stonemeyer those of you who know donald stonemeyer don built his boots right there in this workshop that same guy from the previous uh slide chris doyle Tico not, his boat was built right here, so you can build a boat from scratch. Don is working on another boat right there in Port in Chagaramas. Next slide. So we're going to into Peak Flat Yard again. Don in Chagaramas, there you, you, you have access to ATM machines. There's a Peak Channelry store, a little glimpse of what it looks like inside there. To support anything you could get there. So if anybody thinks that shops are emptying out and closing up, closing up, look at how well stocked it is. And there we have Electropics, just the back end. Electropics, get all the electronics and um, fancy uh, equipment for your boat at Electropics and Peaks. And we have world-class Chandlery, Budget Marine, really super store. You walk inside there and you go, wow, am I in the States or Europe? It's just about anything you can get in, in, in Peaks, in uh, Budget Marine. I had a little conversation with one of the supervisors. We did a little video with her, but just didn't have the time to accommodate it. He said, if you don't find it here, We'll get it for you, and as you can get just about anything in Chagaramas. Um, if you don't, don't. If you need to get it and bring it, you know, bring it on your own. Just, just to let you all know, it's duty and VAT free. It's a facility that the government has put in place to help boost the industry. Going to the cluster again, then upper right hand side, we have Dennis from Good Goodwood Marine. Um, he is doing fantastic with his skill. I mean, his world class service. We have a pharmacy, upper dockers for you guys who you know, want to have a little duty-free um, liquor, dockyard electrics. Then we have Dynamite, that service. You can pull up right in Chagarama, so one in Marinas, make a flight, have your flight arrangements, hand the keys to Mark and his team, and take, take it, we take it to the airport, and next time we come back to train that, he would have everything done on your boat for you, to scratch. Tropical Marine, and in Tropical Marine, we have another popular spot, as a wheelhouse pub. I'm sure some of you all ranting and raging that you're not here to get your bacon shark or your swordfish dinner at the wheelhouse and amazing right in the waterfront and again we have some laundry services right in tropical so as you move on that sounds a little bit tiring all the work that you have to do on your boat and so on so let's get into a little more of the fun stuff and just to let you all know a lot of these pictures were taken you know before covid so we, you'll see most people will not have masks on so just bear that in mind. So we have the Karani Bird Sanctuary, home of all scarlet ibis, and world's famous East Right Nature Center. I mean, I know there are people that go here all the time just to get some r, &R. You could overnight over there too, East Right Nature Center. Then again, I had to make mention that we, this was before COVID. You see how everybody's mouth, mouths are open. Top picture there, there's a shadow fox, Jim and Danny background over there, but he's grabbing that barbecue pigtail. Steve is probably dribbling right now for that barbecue pigtail. And there we are. Bottom right hand side corner, Shadow Fox, everybody is grabbing for Sahina. Dribble, dribble, Louise. Sahina right there, girl. So taste of training can continue. I mean, down right hand side corner, we drive, drive around the island. Sometimes we stop in the middle of the road because there's this tree loaded with a bunch of yellow fruits on the ground. We just stop and pick up mangoes, sweet like sugar, watermelon, directly from the, the fields, doubles, delphinus, all, all our good friends who have done the taste of training. Then if you're a little more on the active side, want a little more challenge to, to your day, do some hiking. Trinidad, and Tobago, Trinidad doesn't have the SSS, the Sun Sand and Sea. Our sister isle, Tobago, is where you can get all of that. So hiking, top picture on your right. You, can, you have to look good to see how small we are down there. That gives the effect of how tall this waterfall is, Rincon Waterfall. And it's a challenge to get there. So here we have some more pictures of top right hand side corner. We, we're on the north, the north side, on the top, sorry, left hand side corner. A bunch of folks over there on a hike. They call that rock, turtle rock. It looks just like a turtle. We're going to one of the waterfalls. And then right hand side, that's the Guanapo Gorge. We have the, the fellow in the middle over there, everybody all suited up with a life jacket. That fellow is called the Snake Man. Those of you who know Snake Man, that's our tour guide. And you want to be with the Snake Man out in the wilderness. We have 
a couple of folks over there having a good time. Once you jump into that gorge, see those rocks? There's no way of going back. Better, it's just one way out. There we go. In the river swamp and entering that, we have two of the very, you know, indigenous monkeys, the white capuchin and the red hollow monkey. So, almost done here. A little contrast. Take a look at this. Between this Good morning, and everybody, and what a beautiful day today it is, and it's a holiday in Trinidad, but we are on our way down to the Gaspari Caves, and it's down the islands, one of the islands, so it's going to be a fun day today, the weather is lovely, and we should have a great day today, Gaspari Caves. priority life jackets number two priority doubles on all of our trips contrast next picture please mud volcano so from one lovely crystal clear water look at the top right hand side corner take a swim if you want there's the pr2 um robbie and pete's there's robin there's oh there's um top right hand side corner lynn uh roxy so there's Bruce always hanging in there with the with spectacle. Oh, there's Alex down to the bottom left-hand side corner there with his hat. So having fun times. Next slide. This might look like a dull, boring picture or slide. Trust me, the only place that they could walk on any natural asphalt is right here in the southern part of Trinidad and, and um, the asphalt lake. So next carnival here, Mecca carnival. This is where it all happens. It happened this year. Unfortunately, not sure what's going to happen for 2021. Again, Joan, we'll just keep everybody posted as to what happens to Carnival 2021. Jesse, uh, can I ask a question? Yeah. All right. Um, we're showing some pictures. We know this is before COVID, but you're still doing tours. You're still able to go places. You just have to wear masks and you're socially distancing in your van and everything like that. Right. Correct. So on my bus is a 14-seater bus, so all taxis at this point is 50% occupancy, maintaining the social distances and the face masks. Correct. Oh, there we go. Another lineman party going on. Lynn, Mark, Sharon and Lee. Look at those guys just having fun times at the world's famous Angus Tura Rum Factory. And that combined together with the steel pan man down to the bottom, Tony. Steel pan was the only instrument invented here in Trinidad handmade right here. So Mark, Willie, um, Lee, hope to see you all to have some of that drinks together with you all here, you know, sometime. We're blessed with the giant little back turtles phenomena happening here, right on our shores. Diwali, one of the national uh, religious holiday over here, again, due to the COVID pandemic. It will, will be happening, but it'll all be within people's private home and they'll be doing their celebrations within their home and their families only. Wonderful experience. So again, so much to do in Trinidad. Top right hand side corner if you want to do, have a little excitement. Sorry, top left hand side corner. A little sport fishing um, here. Then you can go up to Fort George. There's a, um, a bunch of books up in, in Fort George if you want to go and have some fun, real fun time cricket. T20 cricket, actually T T20 cricket is happening in Trinidad presently, but just the players, there's no fans or anything like that, but it's all being streamed live worldwide. And bottom left hand side corner, we'll swim as Beacon Shark at Maracas. Again, there's Shirley with Bruce having a, a Beacon Shark down there. And again, the diversity and the culture of the people here in Trinidad. Temple out in the sea. And this, this Murti is a Murti of one of the, a statue of one of the tallest Hindu. Uh, Murti's gods outside of India. It's 85 feet tall. It's an amazing thing just to see. Slide. So just about coming to the end of this presentation now, but I cannot not uh, pay tribute, tribute and kudos to the to you cruisers who come here to Trinidad and once there's any disaster or cruisers, uh, locals in need, cruisers always step in to assist. Top right hand side corner, there's our, our darling Susie, spirited lady. Here's Lee right in the back over there. As my friend's truck um, flooded in 2018, we, we, a call was sent out for, for dinghies. Lots of people know, you know, I'm involved with yachting and 
in a flash, I was able to get a sportable trailer. My friend donated it, and the cruisers um, loaned their dinghies, and we went out to assist in flooded communities. People were stranded in, on the top of the roofs. Bottom, bottom left-hand side corner, I know he's going to ring my ass for this. That's Ian on Lila. That man did some amazing driving through that um, floodwaters down central. And then finally, during this COVID period time, that was the last project the cruisers did, uh, came up with some funds, uh, donations, and we bought uh, hampers and distributed to the communities within Chagaramas and some of the contractors who needed it also. So, um, in spite of these difficult times, I know those are some nice times over there, but in spite of these difficult times we are all facing here, all around the world, one of the aims of the, this webinar, and we'll be doing some more, as Joan will let you all know, is to keep everyone informed and up, uh, updated and to let you all know that we're still here and we're operating and we're looking forward to better times ahead when we'll be able to welcome cruisers back to Trinidad and Tobago, where you can get all your Yachting needs taken care of and experience and enjoy what a wonderful, all the wonderful things that Trinidad and Tobago has to offer. So that's, that's about the end of my presentation for now. Um, but before I do, I would like to say special thanks. Well, before, before I say thanks, I'd just like to also congratulate our new government. We had general elections here on the 10th of August. Um, we have a just to, to congratulate our new um, government, Dr. Rowley and his team, um, and YSAT is committed to working together with the government to move our industry forward in, in these challenging times and finding ways uh, to move, take this industry forward. So thank you to SSCA, the Cruising, Seven Seas Cruising Association for sponsoring and making this happen. We really do appreciate, I do appreciate it very much. Uh, thanks to Bruce, uh, while Matilda for, and Steve Manley on Resetta for all the pictures and all others contributing to the pictures and videos. Thanks to my wife, Sharon Rose. Without her, this would not have been possible today, all these slide presentations. She did it all you know, by herself. Uh, thanks to Sally from the Caribbean Compass for her great support during these very difficult and challenging, challenging times. To Caribbean Safety and Security Nets, Noon Site, thank you all very much for the support. And um, I want to say a special thank you to my, uh, our, my good friend, Dr. Parthap Singh, for taking the time to be with us here and to share your knowledge and, uh, you know, with us today. Thank you very much, Doc. Thanks to the YSAT, Fernando Bigo Coast Guard, North Coast Radio Station team, Maritime Services, and the business community of Shagaramas. Thank you all for your support. Now we're going and to have some slides. Excuse me. Uh, we're going to have a question and answer session slides and also there's question and answers and a chat session that we'll answer the questions on. So why don't you go through these questions and um, answers that have, people have been asking you, Jesse, and right. I'm sure that Andy will be able to help on some of them too. Okay, so we have some FAQs over here that we've collected. Question. We have a, a book. We have booked a spot in one of the marinas here in Chagaramas for the hurricane. Do we have permission to come down to Trinidad and to see that the borders are closed? At the present moment, no borders st still remain, are still closed, but we are lobbying government at this present time to find some sort of exemption or so uh, to get cruises here. And again, once you get any updates, it'll be posted up on my website, www.membersonymaxtaxi.com and we'll share the information with all the SSCA and the various social media platforms. So once approval to sail to Trinidad, Trinidad is given, are there any requirements or things that cruisers need to do ahead of time? Yes, all the new requirements, forms, instructions, protocols, whatever they may be, some of it uh, that we spoke about today may, may change, but it will be posted on the website again. And it will have to be to adhered to before coming here. Will cruisers be put into quarantine since we have been, they've been already quarantined? <laughs> where they are and have COVID tests already done and so on. Yes, you'll have to be going to quarantine still and whatever the protocol, health protocols are, um, once you arrive over here, you'll have to, all the protocols will have to be followed. What happens when you go into quarantine? When you arrive and you go into quarantine, Coast Guard will be monitoring quarantine. A certified boarding agent accompanied by the port health officer 
will visit your yachts to go to do all the initial health check and whatever protocols need to be followed. The boarding agent will collect your passports and get you cleared into customs and immigration and return all your documents to you after. Can we fly from Trinidad once released from quarantine and all yachts? Yes, but you can fly out, but at this point, the air borders are also closed there. So there are no regular flights, but there are repatriation flights that have been going to the US, to Canada, and to Europe. So once those flights are available, you can get onto it. There are some local flights to Tobago, but just mostly for essential services. And flights will start you know, moving on a regular basis once uh, borders reopen. This is a very popular question. What if I have a pet living aboard? Unfortunately, you know, due to WHO uh, uh, advice, currently no pets have been allowed into Trinidad. Once this has changed, you know, with the science and so on, um, I'll post it up and um, let cruisers know via the social media when this, this, this change. Will we be able to get supplies, food, fuel upon arrival? In quarantine, yes, um, you, it, it, you will be able to get it, but on a scheduled basis only. It will be ferried out to you in quarantine. Uh, emergency supplies, though, if it's needed, we'll, we'll get it to you as soon as possible. Right? But cruisers, we encourage cruisers to come fully stocked, at least to spend two weeks in quarantine um, upon arrival here. Jesse, you're already doing this with the boats that are repatriating, aren't you? If they're nationals trying to come back, you're following right. this already. So, so you already question. have the template. You just need to be able to get the approval so that someone yeah. besides a national can Correct. come into uh, the island. Yes, thank you, June, for that. Yes, so, and even as, as we speak, there are two, two boats down in quarantine right now, and I've been assisting them. One of them needed an extra anchor because his boat was dragging. So we had to go through the protocol to get permission from Ghost Guard and so on. It's running really smooth. And I think, you know, once it continues and the authorities see that, you know, this thing is working, people are being, they're staying safe and there's no, and Doc could probably chat to talk to, the, to this point a little more. You know, it has been moving really well and smooth and no issues at all with the but locals you, trying to get back home. Via boats. Do you have about 50 boats, 50 cruisers that are, are there in lockdown, um, that were there before everything locked down? And everybody else has gone to Grenada, pretty much, correct? Correct, yes. But those who are here in Chagramas, you know, they are abiding by the, um, the rules and regulations. People can still move around, go to the grocery stores, you need fuel, whatever, repairs on the boat here just started back up like you all saw. Um, but, you know, all protocols has to be, uh, you know, adhered to, face mask in the public and so on, um, has to be followed by everyone. Let me bring up the questions here in the question and answer. And um, let me read the first one off. Is Trinidad included in the Caribbean bubble? If a yacht completes in say St. Lucia and sails to Trinidad, would quarantine in Trinidad be required? The answer I think to that is yes. So All right. yes. that's, I think it's already done. Um, and then, hi, Jesse. Fred on Caribbean Dream. With the oh, up cases, yes, hi, Fred. <laughs> in Trinidad, is it realistic that those waiting in Grenada to come before November will be able to? And then, best to Sharon and your daughter. Um, we're going to answer that one live. You know, waiting in Grenada to come before November, I, you're going to have to stay in touch. Jesse, you can answer that one. Yes, I would say stay in touch. And those of you who are further up north right now, waiting for what is so, or some sort of facilitation. At this point, uh, um, I've been advising and telling cruisers to start heading down north, uh, south. If you can get to Grenada and go through the process, come, come along because, you know, we're getting late into the hurricane season and so on. And with the doc, um, if you can add to this, with the increase in the community spread, it's going to make things a little, you know, government is, you know, going to hold on to. Uh, waiting until things um, get to, you know, under control. Somewhere. Yeah, I, no, sorry. Ahead, Andy. No, I just really to support that. Um, we really can't say, um, but whether November is realistic to expect because we really now starting to see cases coming up in the community and the numbers are increasing. And with that, you know, there is, I mean, there is the community demand. There are people 
saying and and you know concern so opening borders may not be on their priority uh so yeah if you can get it down to grenada as jesse says then yeah what happens if a big hurricane heads for grenada okay I was prepared for that question and I, I, I just double checked it. So we had a, a situation with uh, Hurricane Gonzalo, was it? Gonzalo, where there, there were some concerns. So as when it happened, people, people came down to Trinidad and they went into Chakachikari to find safe shelter. Was God allowed it? Um, and they, they even found some boats that came down just hung around out in the, out in the Gulf of Nine, and then they, they left and go back. So to find a safe shelter, um, because that won't turn you away, but you'll have to come with, you know, the designated area as of now is Chakachikari, but as soon as the weather system pass, passes, because the borders are closed, um, cruisers will have to head back out to um, Grenada, wherever you come, came from but it will be facilitated um, as did happen last time. And then Tom, uh, on, uh, Tom Kins asked, what is the status of the convoys from Grenada to Trinidad? Right, so one, once there's any facilitation that, that the government and the government allows uh, cruisers to come, and we can, you know, coming on a convoy will actually be easier because we'll have control, you know, more control with, you know, as to who and how many are coming and to place them in the quarantine and course that will be able to follow it and so it'll be a much easier way to, to get cruisers here in a convoy rather than one one you know even though you know we'll have to have control over every yacht coming over here and we have a presently we have a database again bruce and while motel has been helping me over the past couple of months so we have a database of all who would like to come to trinidad and until and you know it's like you're registering and let us know where you are and so on and until that time of exemption or facilitation and the government say, okay, Chagarama is screwed, you know, yacht in the industry, you all get that. We're going to start allowing maybe 20 yachts, 50 yachts at a time to go through the process. We will, why is that? Uh, we will let you all know who to come, when to come. So be all done in a controlled manner, go into quarantine. And again, the, the, the government don't want, you know, you have to be very careful in overloading the system, the, the healthcare system because they want to make sure just in case there's any issues at all with any cruisers we know cruisers are you know mostly safe and there's been no issues at all but um just to make sure but convoys will be much easier to come down come down in whenever the time and the permission has been given that'll make my life easier in chagrin jesse just a question yes. since you have a convoy with the vessels <laughs> listed um and you know where they're coming and you know where they're going and you've got them in a group. Wouldn't that be easier for the government to understand that cruisers coming in a group like that to a, a protected anchorage? That right. sounds very organized. Correct. Not just one coming in, two coming in, you don't know where they're coming in or what's going on. It could be a very right. organized process if you wanted Correct. to try working that one. Yes. Um, Doc, you, would you like to say anything to that? Um, other than to say, well, this was factored into the plan and what we did Correct. was, Mr. James, it, it presented that entire schedule as a proposal. Uh, so, so they, they, and that's why it really is a comprehensive, firm approach, very, very structured, very controlled. And we really don't foresee a problem from the health side. The challenge really would be borders being open or not open. Maybe... Um, like you asked the question, Joe, and if there was a hurricane, what will happen in a situation like that? And better, you know, we have a phrase, a better cannot be done kind of situation. At least there's a structure in place that if such a situation were to arise, YSAT uh, can lobby for, and Mr. James can lobby for, well, here is what, we, get, we have these levels and these measures sure, of control. Right. Correct. That is why your real focal point um, and your hub really is true, Mr. James. Well, that's very helpful. Uh, it's unfortunate Trinidad's not planning to open anytime soon because people are getting very worried with the hurricanes. They're starting and it's a long time till November. Um, but yes. thank you very much for this. And so, we have a uh, chat 
And we have Kings Kingsley Ross. Any guess when the country will open using these procedures? And uh, Andy, you said that's a tough one. Depends on the cases and how that happens. And then Bill said to all, everyone, thanks, Jesse. We miss Trinidad and our friends. Hope we can get down there in the future. Best of luck in our oh, thoughts, right. Shannon. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, very, 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 um, very thoughtful, some thoughtful questions. Um, if anyone else has any questions or would like to um, have some suggestions, we'd appreciate it. We will be sending out an email with uh, the information on the sites to everyone. Uh, Andy, do you have anything to say? Nope. Jesse? Right, so Joan, yeah. Um, in following up, what's the, the convoy whole structure and the fact that you know it sounds like as if we have a very well like doc said a comprehensive plan uh, so this is one of our strong points that we are continuing to lobby you know the, the, the government the minister of national security parliament actually you know just got open back on friday gone so it's you know things that are going to start to move back again and then we'll watch the next couple of weeks and see what happens but we it's we have a lot of strong points going for us but the convoy plan and you know what's any proposal um, for whenever that time reach that the government will um, you know love. so we, we we continue to lobby from my side point point of view and well, be, thank you very much for for both of you for giving sharing some time with us taking time to chat because we started a little early because of we're not sure how and <laughs> we're going to do September 10th will be uh, Puerto Rico will be uh, Panama and will be the Canary Islands talking about how traffic is going to be moving through there. And that will also be a complimentary webinar. You can go to www.ssca.org and see that. And um, um, don't mind, I'm messing this up. Um, anyway, we, we appreciate the time you spent with us. Um, we're going to be doing this several times during the next couple months. And we hope that you'll come up with a virtual GAM, Jesse. We'll try it that yes. we'll try that I, um, down there. So looking forward to do that turn that GAM. And um, you know, it's it, it, I'm very excited about it. So and I'll I you know me, I, I will come up with some little surprises that'll benefit the cruising community, you know, coming out of that. So you know, look out for it. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you to all my friends outside here. Just say hi to them. She's right here, but she's, you know, she doesn't want to show her face. Drag her over. They're sharing. <laughs> and Julie is right, right looking at us, looking on from uh, behind the screen over here too. And from Louise, she said, thank you for the panel. Take care, do well. Please let us know about the Panama oh. webinar. And that will be September 10th. And I have September Russ, 10th. September 10th, 6 p.m. Thursdays, 6 p.m. And um, you will be able to hear about Panama from Russ. I've got an hour and a half plan, but it's going wow. to be scheduled. So if you want to come in at uh, 6 o'clock or 6.30 or 7 o'clock. We also have a Gus Martin from the Canaries. And he will go over what's happening there because there's boats coming from that direction okay. who also need to know what they're coming to. Correct, yes. And there's some seminars going on there that we'll try to get information mm -hmm. to those boats um it's a it's a problem yeah um yeah. puerto rico is open we know some places uh, virgin islands are open bbis aren't open antigua's open with rules uh Dom dominica's open uh martinique the french islands many many thanks to louise um who shared what was going on with martinique and that's the same i think with french um saint martin's Noonside is the point of contact for everyone's posting to Noonside. Thank you, Sue. Richard. Thanks, Sue. Richard, yeah. so much. And yes. um, I'm sure that Andy will keep uh, Jesse informed, and Jesse will yes. use his website to get the word out. Yep. I don't know when the government's going to get their own website, but Jesse, you are the government website for cruisers. <laughs> no. Just do my and part, so, <laughs> Thank you, thank you all for attending. And yes. um, I'm going to wrap it up. If anyone has any other questions, I don't see any Q&A. I don't see chat. I see quite a few people online. And um, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.
Thank you all. Thank you, Joan. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much.